first day here, the wind commander had us out on parade on the tarmac out here, and there were 126 of us in that flight. And he said, look to the man on your left and the man on your right, and one of you won't be here in six weeks. In other words, he was going to eliminate a third. Well, he did better than that. He wiped out over half. So uh, the fear of being eliminated or washed out uh, was great. It was an agreement, a result of an agreement between Franklin Roosevelt and Winston Churchill that we would train British aviators in this country at seven flying training schools. And that's because it was very dangerous to train British aviators in Great Britain, uh, not only because of the weather, but the fact that German fighters were still ranging over the southern part of England. So they opened up seven flying training schools in this country. Uh, they were in California, Arizona. They were also in uh, Texas and Oklahoma and one in Florida. The one here at Falcon Field uh, became number four British flying training school. They broke ground here in, uh, in July of 1941 to build this field for the British. And the field was completed in mid-September of 1941. So the whole field was laid out and built in just a little more than three months. When the war started in 1939, I was 14 years old. Nobody ever thought that I didn't, of all people, didn't think that I would ever be involved in the war. Well, the war lasted a long time. And uh, we could enlist when we were 17 and a quarter, and, uh, which I did. And, uh, but then I spent five years in the RAF. Uh, the British used uh, PT-17s, uh, which are primary trainers. Uh, for a short period of time, they used BT-13s, basic trainers, but they did away with those after a few months. So they went from the primary trainer, the PT-17, into the advanced trainer, the AT-6, known as the Texan. Those were the same aircraft that the American aviators were training in. During the period of time they were here, 2,500 round number aviators went through the program. Approximately 1,500 of them did go ahead and graduate. The remainders washed out. I was fortunate and, uh, to be one of the survivors and who, who actually graduated, for which I was, it was tough because they made it tough. He would walk in and, and say, cadet, let's fly. That means you'd go and fly and that'd be the end of it. You get a one-way ticket back to England. So I learned that he didn't go into the restroom. So I'd sit and read in the restroom rather than be exposed to the chance of him catching me and saying, cadet, let's fly. Well, they went on from their training here to about any aircraft that was in the inventory for either government. Uh, many of the British aviators that trained here went to Bomber Command uh, because Bomber Command in England flying very dangerous missions, same as the Americans did during the day. British were flying at night with Lancasters and aircraft such as that, and they lost a lot of those people. So many of the replacements came from this field. I know uh, Course 12 that went through here in 1943 had approximately 30 members in it, and of those 30 members, about 22 of them were killed in action after they went back to Britain. Uh, everybody in England uh, was exposed to the, to the bombing and the rationing and the general hardship of the war. It was not easy. You know, this was like coming to paradise. You know, coming from England, World War II England, and then coming down here and seeing the orange trees, with, you know, and the perfect weather, you know, it was fantastic. It was really a privilege, and uh, I've treasured that ever since. Well, after the war, the field, uh, of course, the British all moved out, the Americans moved out. The field was here, but it was not real active. There was a couple businesses around it, but it was uh, uh, used off and on for private pilots primarily until 1948 when the city of Mesa bought the grounds back and decided they needed a municipal airport and started developing the whole field to what you can see here today 
which is the fifth or sixth busiest municipal airport in the country and brings in multiple millions of dollars to the city of Mesa. I live now about five miles east of Falcon Field, so I still see these planes that take off. I kind of live every minute of it when I see them. And you remember, well, they're termed the greatest generation. That's not just the military aviators or the military people of World War II, but it's also the American uh, industry. Because during World War II, this country went from a peacetime economy and geared up to a wartime economy in a very, very short period of time. So it was a war that the entire uh, American nation rose up to support. So why do we honor these fellows? Uh, because of the jobs they did during the war.